Hi, welcome to My Honest Truth, episode 27. Today I'm going to do something a little bit different. I'm going to talk to you about acting. I want to go over a little bit more than my acting resume. I want to go over what I've acted in before. When I was in grade 7, I got a role in my elementary school's Christmas play. I played a game show host. In that role, I sung and danced, and I asked trivia questions to Santa Claus. That was when I realized that I like acting. In grade 8, I got a much smaller role in our class's production of Jesus Christ Superstar. I played a member of a crowd, an apostle, and a leper. I didn't like that role because I wear glasses and I had the line, see my eyes, I can hardly see. I didn't like that. Then in high school, I played a police officer in the musical Annie. I played Sammy in the drama Go Ask Alice. I played Tremoy in the drama The Lark. I played a priest in a version of Dracula. I played a dancer in scene 11 of The Sound of Music. And I played the leader in a play called The Birds. My role as a police officer in Annie was easy, but it was too easy. I memorized the lines was given instruction on what to do, but there was barely any rehearsing of my part. So I played him as a slightly angry, hunched-over guy, which was an idea of mine at the time, but which just isn't right for that officer in that particular play. An actual police officer who worked with the school allowed me to use one of his uniforms for the play, so I wore an actual police uniform when I performed that role in that play. I think it's illegal for people to impersonate police officers, but uh, I think that we had a pass on that for the stage play, though. When I played Sammy in Go Ask Alice, I didn't like that I was cast as the bad boy who attempts to rape the main character, Alice. Before that play, the girl who played Alice was somewhat of a friend of mine. After that play, she looked at me differently, and it was never the same again. When I played Tremoy in the drama The Lark, I truly realized that acting can have more dimensions than just saying your lines and doing your actions. Even though the role was rather small, I felt that I used the space, the dimensions of the stage, more properly than I had done before. I felt that the play was alive, a living, breathing work of art, and I was honored to be within that. When I played a priest in a version of Dracula, I spent time between my scenes imagining a side adventure that my character was having off stage between the scenes. And when I'd enter the stage for my scenes, I was fresh from that side adventure, playing the role with the subtext of that side adventure's reality. When I played a dancer in The Sound of Music, I learned the dance. I was partnered up with a girl. When the time came for the first performance, I looked her so deeply in the eyes and smiled so softly and danced so well that right after that first performance of that play, the girl told me that she loved me. I didn't pursue a relationship with her, but that was a mistake, as she was very beautiful. When I played the leader in a play called The Birds, I was in grade 12, and I had a lot on my plate at the time, a lot regarding school, and a lot regarding my home life. I said the lines and I did the actions, and we did an okay play, I was the main character, and I'm told I carried the play well as the main character, but to this day I still can't tell you what that play was about. Even though I was the main character in it, I felt like a leashed robot, just doing the actions and stuff. It wasn't the kind of play that I would have wanted to star in. That was my grade 12 play and I was the star, but throughout grades 9 to 12, there were certain criteria that I had in mind 
for the play that I would hopefully star in in grade 12. And that particular play met none of those personal criteria. I should have rejected the role. When I was 17 and still in high school, I joined a theater group that was at the local university. The group was called the Newman Players. I had great times with the Newman Players. I acted in a play called Macbeth. I played the character named Malcolm, who has the third most lines in Macbeth. I remember that when I was cast, that when the cast was announced at a meeting, I asked how long we had to memorize the lines. The first rehearsal was 16 days after that meeting, and so the director joked that we had 16 days to memorize the lines. I was the only person in that entire cast who came to the first rehearsal with all my lines memorized. That impressed a guy named Ed who played Duncan, and we became friends for quite some time after that. The thing about playing Malcolm and Macbeth was, the thing about playing Malcolm when I was 17 was that at that age I absorbed the language. I understood what I was saying, why I was saying it, and I understood what I was doing too. I even choreographed a brief fight between Malcolm and Macduff, a fight which wasn't in Shakespeare's original script, but the director let my fight into the play because it added action and it looked spectacular. Ed cast me in a short play he wrote called Secrets. In Secrets, I played a guy named George who was addicted to Diet Coke. Secrets was about a small codependent family group. It was a comedy, and I pulled off my gags well. Ed co-directed with me a play I wrote. The play I wrote was a 90-minute comedy called The Professor. For four nights in a row, a cast of nine actors, plus me, I played a guy in the audience who did some interaction with the stage. It would. It was a play... It was nine actors plus me performing a play I wrote called The Professor. One of the actors told me that a, that my play was like a good episode of Days of Our Lives. I had not watched any of that show before I wrote that play, but I took it as a compliment. And nowadays I have seen some episodes of that show, and I still take it as a compliment. In fact, I take it as more of a compliment. The episodes I watched because I got interested in a particular storyline. Those episodes were actually really well done, and so I took it as quite a, and so I take it as quite a compliment that that one actor said that my play was like a good episode of that. Ed and I traveled to Winnipeg for 15 days where we did seven performances of a play he co-wrote with me called Shakespeare's Teacher. I played Shakespeare, Ed played the teacher. We got good reviews. Our rehearsals for Shakespeare's teacher were horrible though. We didn't pull it off we didn't pull it all together until our first performance. All of the performances went really well. At one of our final rehearsals, one where I invited a friend to watch, that really screwed up. I uh <coughs> I uh, drank a shot of scotch before the rehearsal, and I I just did not do a good job. And that was like our final rehearsal. But like, in the car ride going to Winnipeg, we rehearsed the play a few times, like uh, back and forth, uh, just uh, going over the lines. And uh, when we finally did our first performance, it all came together. And uh, and each of the seven performances of that play were really well done. Um, even though um, during some of the performances, I made an acting choice where my character, the student, would re regress into behaving like a small child. And... Uh, Apparently that ran out. Apparently that went over well with the audience, but it uh, surprised Ed, who I was acting with, 
uh, but he went along with it. It wasn't something that we, it wasn't something that we uh, threw in in any of the rehearsals. I did that the first time, like I regressed into acting like a small child during my lines, and uh, it, it went over really well with the audience, but um, it surprised Ed, but he kept up. He kept up, and uh, I don't know, experiments like that uh, maybe should be done in rehearsal, but uh, we really didn't have enough time for rehearsing that particular play. A local, perf well, that, I don't know, maybe I just wasn't in the mindset during most of our rehearsals, because, uh, you know, I was able to memorize my role as Malcolm in 16 days. Um, so when I played Shakespeare and Shakespeare's teacher uh, with Ed as the teacher, maybe I could have memorized my lines in time, but I didn't really have it all down until the first performance. And we did seven performances of that and we got good reviews and that's all that really matters. A local professional company cast me in a show called A Christmas Cactus. I played a character named Smedley who was an embezzler. I got paid for my performance in that show, which means that I am a professional actor. I would love to get a good role in this day and age. One thing about that play, The per a Christmas Cactus, is it's the only play I ever acted in where there was a scene where I kissed a woman. And uh, that was kind of one of the criteria I had for, like, what I wanted in my grade 12 play is I wanted a scene where I kiss a woman. Um, you know, uh, why not, eh? Um, I saw another high school play in that uh, same school, a production of The Little Mermaid, where the grade, where, where, where the actor who played the main character, the actor who played the male lead, in the in, in near the end of the play, they they had a kiss on stage. So why couldn't I have had a kiss on stage in my grade twelve play? That was one of my criteria. Yeah, it's egotistical, but, uh, you know, I, I, I was a pretty cute-looking guy when I was that age, so why not? I don't know, but he decided, uh, the director decided to make me star in a play called The Birds, which, you know, even though I performed it, I can't really remember what it was about. Anyway... I was in another professional play, one called Rocket Squirrel. I played two characters, a weasel and a cat named Puss Puss. That was very fun. It was a Star Trek-like space adventure for kids. Um, <clears throat> but uh, in one performance, I, uh, while I was playing the bad guy in that Star Trek-like space adventure for kids, in one performance, I um, I gave one of our props to one of the kids in the audience, and uh, that was an accident. It should have never been done. But um, luckily, through the magic of theater, that kid was done playing with it and handed it back to us just in time for us to need that particular prop again. Ed cast me in a show called Bits and Pieces, which was another professional one, and Shakespeare's teacher was a professional one. I did get paid for that. Um, Bits and Pieces was performed at the local Fringe Festival, and that, that counts as professional because you do get paid for it. I, in, in Bits and Pieces, Ed's Fringe show, Fringe Festival show called Bits and Pieces, I did a monologue that was that lasted about 10 minutes. 10 to 12 minutes the monologue lasted. It was quite a monologue, yeah, actually. I was saying all sorts of dramatic things with, with no through line that I could interpret or perceive anyway. In fact... 
I only understood about a third of what I was saying, um, yet the audience members approached me after each performance and told me that they could relate to what I was talking about. And uh, they were mostly older people who said that they could relate to what I was talking about. So I guess that was good, but... Uh, <coughs> But in all honesty, I only understood about a third of what I was saying in that, like, 12-minute monologue. A church got me to play a character named Corporal Pete Moss in a short comedy called Live from the Battlefield, which took place during the Armageddon. My character had a handheld computer. I loaded the script into that computer and I ran from the computer during my performance because I just didn't feel like memorizing that one. The handheld computer was not in the script. It's something I brought for myself so I could pretend it was useful uh, for military strategy, uh, blah, blah, blah. Um, uh, but I was reading the script from that because I did not memorize that script. Uh, yet, I was told I did a very good performance. I... I uh, I changed my voice for that one. I did a cartoony voice because the play itself was quite cartoony. And uh, I'm told that the, the audience, they really loved the voice that I did. So uh, I guess that was kind of a... Kind of in exchange for me just reading a lot of my lines from the computer. Um... Of course, the play would have been better if I weren't reading any lines from the computer and if I did that voice all throughout it. Um, but, uh, yeah, but things turned out okay with that. Um, there was a video made of that, and uh, the video has since been deleted from anywhere that I know where it is. I was in the background for a pop music video called Nobody Finds Me by a singer named Nicole Lishka. I was in the background in a high school drama television pilot called Green Ocean, which never got picked up by any television network. I played a character named Vincent in a film called Zombies Ate My Shoes, which never got fully edited, only a long trailer exists for that film. I did a stunt in episode 6 of a reality show called Ultimate Party Quest, which I'm told aired on some TV channels somewhere, and it was made by a group called Pinpoint Media Productions, but I can't find anything about that group or anything about that show on the internet anywhere these days. I played a doctor in the first scene of episode 6 of a hospital drama called Body and Soul, which was filmed for the now-defunct PAX television network. Um, and uh, in that show called Body and Soul, uh, the first scene of episode 6 is the scene that I'm in, and uh, the star of that scene was Pat Morita, the guy that played Mr. Miyagi in the original Karate Kid movies. Uh, so I was actually in the same scene as Pat Morita. So uh, that was great, but it's very hard to find that show anywhere nowadays. I was in the background in a music video called What Do I Gotta Do by a singer named Stephanie Thompson. I was in the background of a country music video called Different by Brad Johner. I did close-up monologues for a temporary installation art piece called Enough White Lies to Ice a Wedding Cake by an artist named Linda Duval. I acted as one of the main characters in an, in an, in an entire movie called Norbert's Big Kill, but the director moved on to family life, and that film was never actually edited. So I did have the experience of acting as one of the main characters in a movie, but that movie was never edited, and no one will ever see it. I 
played one of the main characters in a 2007 short film called Mad Lead for Banjo Bubba Red. That film played at some festivals. I played one of the main characters in another short film called Zombie, Do Zombie Doodle Doo Hillbilly Barbecue. The thing about that film is that the director and the people who were in it just show it to people at parties. It's quite entertaining, but you'll never be able to see it unless you know someone who was in it who can show it to you. I do have a copy. It is pretty good, but uh, I only show it to friends sometimes. Uh, I played an interviewer in a web video that was an advertisement for an iPad game called Bomble's Adventure. I voice acted in a project that the artist Linda Duval did called Lament. I disc jockeyed at a local radio station and I also did news at that station and I played trombone in high school band and <coughs> now I'm doing this YouTube show I hope you like it so far well that was me pretty much going over my um, acting resume Maybe I'll get another role sometime in the future. I know I'm really not showing much range with this particular YouTube show. Um, but uh, believe me, when I'm on a stage, I do have range. And uh, there are many people who have seen me act who know that to be a fact. Um, so, thanks for watching this YouTube video. Be sure to tune in for the next episode of My Honest Truth. And uh, if you liked this video, like, share, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you next time.